What's up, Taiwan? How's it going? I'm Ethan Liu with 10 minutes of news from here in Taiwan and around the world. The U.S. has agreed to let Taiwan test American-made Pac-3 missiles on its own. These missiles will be important in defending against a Chinese attack. John Ventrist has more. If China attacks by air, Taiwan is betting on Pac-3 missiles like these to be its defense. They can hit incoming missiles or planes up to 35 kilometers. Taiwan has more than 400 of these missiles deployed in bases across the main island. But until now, testing these missiles has been tricky. The U.S. has only allowed tests on its territory. This has cost Taiwan more than 3 million U.S. dollars per missile and required an observation team to be flown across the Pacific. The restriction was over concerns about Chinese military espionage. Now, though, Taiwan's military says the U.S. attitude has changed. Analysts see it as a breakthrough. They believe that Chinese spying won't be a deterrent. The change in policy comes as the U.S. considers selling Taiwan Pac-3 missiles with an extended range possibly as early as 2025. When the missiles arrive, Taiwan will be able to test them on its own, a step towards greater military autonomy. Klein Wong and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. The International Human Rights Conference Oslo Freedom Forum was held in Taipei this week, and this is the first time the event has taken place in Taiwan since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Ray Ho Kilpatrick was at the forum to tell us more. After a three-year hiatus, the Oslo Freedom Forum has returned to Taipei. The event has brought some of the world's most celebrated human rights advocates to Taiwan's capital. The New York-based Human Rights Foundation, which organizes the forum, says that Taiwan is the perfect match for the occasion. As a strong liberal democracy in a region with so many authoritarian regimes, Taiwan was a natural fit to be a capital of human rights and a beacon for others. This is the third time the Oslo Freedom Forum has brought international human rights leaders to Taiwan. Their presence here buttresses the country's position as a front line for the free world. And for many of the people here, Taiwan's own story, how it moved from autocracy to democracy, is an inspiration that they hope their own countries can follow. Taiwan's journey continues to inspire our community. Among them, individuals who have been personally targeted by authoritarianism. To become more involved in advancing fundamental freedom in Asia and globally. While speakers at the half-day event hailed from around the world, most came from the Asia-Pacific region. These included the leader of Thailand's political opposition and high-profile activists from Myanmar, Hong Kong and China. Despite their different backgrounds, they say they're united by a common struggle. In the past few years, even though we've seen a major change in the attitude towards um, the largest authoritarian regime uh, of the world, China. So I, I think we still need more effort, more, more united to amass resources to counter the expansion of dictators. This Chinese footprint is all over the place. Um, all this is, is interconnected, whether you are in Iran, in Myanmar, in Thailand, in Hong Kong or in Taiwan. What we learned from the uh, war in Ukraine is that the international community actually has the capacity uh, to take action uh, if they have the political will. The Human Rights Foundation hopes to make Taiwan an annual stopover in its conference circuit. They also aim to open a new office in the country if they can secure enough local support. As activists increasingly share their experiences and forge new partnerships, events like this help Taiwan cement its role as a hub for defenders of freedom from around the world. Ryan Hill Kilpatrick for Taiwan Plus. 
Police have freed 32 people held prisoner by a fraud ring in Taoyuan, northern Taiwan. Officers also made eight arrests in a raid on the gang space Thursday night. Police say gang members lured their victims to the site with promises of high-paying jobs and then bound them with handcuffs. The victims were refused food and subjected to cruelty and abuse, investigators say. The bodies of three people were discovered nearby. They are believed to have been killed by their captors. Police freed 26 fraud victims in a related raid in Danshui, New Taipei City on Tuesday. The case is still under investigation. A panel of local experts have unanimously backed Taiwan's homegrown medicine COVID-19 vaccine. The country's Food and Drug Administration held an expert meeting on November 3rd. After reviewing relevant data, the 14 participants concluded that the shot was effective in reducing the odds of severe illness or death. The Medigen jab received emergency use authorization last July, but authorities required the company to produce a report on its effectiveness within a year. The World Health Organization, meanwhile, is currently testing the Medigen vaccine as part of an international vaccine trial. The jab's limited recognition as an infective vaccine by foreign countries has been the point of political tension in Taiwan. Taiwan's biggest international film festival held its opening night on Wednesday. The Golden Horse is an annual event which leads up to the biggest award ceremony in Chinese language cinema. And this year, people with blindness or low vision could also enjoy the festival's premiere alongside their with their sighted friends. Stush Butler reports. <laughs> Attendants fit headphones to moviegoers. It's the opening night of Taiwan's top film festival, and for the first time, people who are blind or partially sighted can enjoy it thanks to personal audio descriptions. The Golden Horse Film Festival has been working on synchronized audio descriptions since 2020. This is the first time the technology has been used on opening night. The Golden Horse Awards feature the very best of Chinese language cinema. Now, synchronized audio descriptions and greater accessibility mean that the world-class event can be enjoyed by an even wider audience. Patrick Chen and Stash Butler for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's Forestry Bureau is using wood from tree plantations to create carbon negative furniture. The pieces appear on display for the first time on Thursday. Bureau officials say the aim of the show is to boost Taiwan's forestry industry while cutting carbon emissions. Stash Butler has more details. Stools made from various trees native to Taiwan hang in the air above a map of the country, formed from 17 kinds of wood chip. Everything here is made from plantation wood, meaning it's carbon neutral or even carbon negative. The exhibition is the result of a collaboration between the Forestry Bureau and National Taipei University of Technology. And the Bureau wants the people of Taiwan to embrace this kind of artisanal, sustainable product. Uh, uh, Officials hope they can boost demand for the products and, in turn, bring down carbon emissions towards Taiwan's net zero goal. The show launched here in Taipei is a small but meaningful step towards that more sustainable future. Patrick Chen and Stash Butler for Taiwan Plus. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, we leave you with images from a drone display in the skies above New York. The event was part of the 10th anniversary for the smartphone game Candy Crush. I'm Ethan Liu. Take care, and I'll see you next time.